Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. We're talking about Paul and Barnabas in Iconium, Galatia. In Iconium, they entered together into the church they just planted for Jesus. Oh, sorry, and I just had to say that. Let's read what it really says. In Iconium, they entered together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spoke that a great multitude, both of Jews and of Greeks, believed. But the disbelieving, a little note here, saying, or disobedient. Disbelieving, disobedient. What you got to understand here is that the word believing and the word obedient in the original Greek is synonymous, okay? To believe is to obey. To disbelieve is to disobey. There are a lot of Christians today that say, well, you know, we don't have to really do anything. We just believe, you know, it's just by faith. No, listen, when you believe, you do something, okay? Your belief, if it's a true belief, is proved by your actions. But the disbelieving or disobedient Jews stirred up and embittered the souls of the Gentiles against the brothers. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who testified to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Now, in other translations, it says something like this, that God confirmed their word through signs that followed. Now, I need to say a little bit about this because there are people today, there is a group of people today that really just chase after signs and wonders. And you know, God does work signs and wonders today. God's still alive, and there are many reasons why God does signs and wonders, including just for his compassion, just to get people to believe. But once we get into the place of chasing signs and wonders, you are walking on thin ice. Because you see this, a lot of times today, these signs and wonders are not really proven signs and wonders. A lot of times it's just really just a lot of hype and people who think that they're healed when they're not really healed. Now, again, don't get me wrong. God does heal people today. God does do the same signs and wonders that he always has done. But there are preachers today that just ride on a wave of fake or pseudo signs and wonders just to really gain followers, just to make themselves look good. It's like the unspoken thing, but you know, their actions say, look what God does through my ministry. Come forward and testify what Jesus did through my ministry. I mean, you know, just, just really for people to look up to them. That's not the way a real, true man of God behaves. A real, true man of God is a man of humility, not a man who likes to show off. I mean, Jesus was never a man that showed off. You know, a lot of times, I mean, actually, it seems like most of the time, whenever he did signs and wonders, he's like, shh, don't tell anybody, okay? Just go your way and just be quiet about it. And I mean, like that is a stark contrast to what we have today in some of the preachers that claim that signs and wonders happen in their meetings. Once again, I'm not saying that signs and wonders don't happen. However, you've got to be wise, okay? You've got to be very wise on what's going on. One litmus test you can always give to a so-called prophet or a so-called preacher. I mean, anybody who claims to be a prophet, in other words, they claim to hear from God, you know, oh, the Spirit of God speaking to me, oh, God speaking to me. Any so-called prophet that does not define and identify sin and call people to repentance is a false prophet. I will say it again. Any so-called prophet today that does not call people to repentance is a false prophet. Every man of God from Genesis to Revelation and beyond called people to repentance. That is a fact. Verse 4, but the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. When some of both the Gentiles and the Jews, with their rulers, made a violent attempt to mistreat and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to the cities of Lycaonia, Lystra, Derbe, and the surrounding region. There they preached the good news. Now notice, these men of God, these apostles, they didn't go, well, you know, God's with us. We know that God's with us. Therefore, we're not going to run from persecution. They want to kill us. Well, you know, we're not going to run in fear. 
hey, you know what? Sometimes you can stand against the enemy with boldness. And other times, you know, you just got to take a little bit of wisdom and just get out of there, okay? If they want to kill you, just get out of there. This is how the apostles operated, okay? So don't get too super spiritual. Don't get too, you know, over arrogant thinking, you know, well, God has got his angels charge over me. Almost like how, you know, the devil tempted Jesus and saying, you know, he's got his angels charge over you. Therefore, you can just, you know, basically fly off the uh, pinnacle of the temple, okay? Listen, you got to be wise. You got to be down to earth. You can't do stupid things. Don't be stupid. And as always, seek God. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.